had a busy weekend. There's a little bit of glitter and all over the church. So. <laughs> and we didn't even The ladies laugh. took over yesterday. We had a wonderful day. Thank you to everybody that was able to come. Those of you who didn't, hopefully you'll make it to the next one. It was another one of those God orchestrated Holy Ghost events from beginning to end. We had a theme. We had... Um, great speakers. Thank you for everybody who took some time to prepare and share with the ladies. It was fantastic. Thank you, Sarah, for the food. Um, it was just awesome. And it was one of those um, divine connections. So we found out that the woman, uh, Brenda, that started Garden Gate Ranch actually attends Heartland, which is where we've been going to the Burns yeah. for all so like divine connections everywhere. And um, her sister, I think, made a new best friend with Sarah. Those two connected, their little <laughs> gypsy spirits. Um, it was just amazing from beginning to end. And we never even got to the crafts. I've been talking about all these crafts we were going to do. But we just, the ministry continued downstairs. And the Holy Ghost definitely mm -hmm. really spoke to some ladies' hearts. So I'm so thankful for that time. Um, so we did this exercise. And I just got to share because I think it's tremendous. But So she just had this big pack of cards, right? And so we, she just threw them all over the table. And everybody went around the room and just shared something big going on in their life right now, whether it's a praise report or whether it's a prayer request. And it was therapy. I don't know for anybody that was there, it was therapy. Like, pe people were sharing from their hearts, there were tears, there was laughter. And then at the end, Brenda would say, okay, which card is speaking to you? Let's see what the Holy Ghost says about it. And you get this card, and these words on these cards are amazing. Mm -hmm. And they're encouraging, and they are life in these cards. So Sarah and I are both talking about getting packs of these cards, especially for our youth, yeah. to be able to minister and give somebody a word of life. Yes. This one says you are tremendous. Believe in yourself. Old opportunities that were once passed by will be representing themselves. Look at them with a new heart and a new attitude. God gives second chances. You will be given keys to a new future. Embrace it and move forward. Those around you are excited for who you are becoming. Choose to trust God. That was a theme yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. He truly has your back. The world will fail you. God will always stand with you. Exciting times are just around the corner for you and those you love. And there's always a scripture at the bottom. How many times have you guys heard me say this this year? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. And I'm telling you, every woman who picked up a card picked up something that the Holy Ghost was speaking personally to them. Or confirmation of what had already been spoken. Or encouragement through the storms of life that were raging right at that moment. So, ladies, thank you. Um, gentlemen, I hope you guys have an opportunity to get together and just be guys, yeah. or whatever that is. Um, <laughs> and, and ladies, the good news is we still have a whole bunch of craft supplies left, so that means we're going to have a Christmas craft night again. I know a couple years ago we made homemade, um, handmade gifts and um, Christmas decor for your house, so guess what? we got lots of craft supplies left, so we'll... Uh, Look for a, a night. We'll try and find a time. I don't know. We'll have to see what, we'll kind of ask around, see what day of the week will work best for everybody. But uh, maybe um, between now and maybe the first couple weeks of December, we'll try and get together and do some crafts. Yeah. More fellowship. Keep it going. Yeah. Cool. So, anybody have any prayer requests or testimonies this morning they'd like to share? Sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, after the women's conference, I'm going to call them but um, started reading again and through it the Holy Spirit taught me this and it's in 1 Peter 5 8 and it says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour so as I was reading that here's the first thing it says he walks around as a roaring lion so as a he's mm -hmm. not really a lion, okay? We have one lion, the Lion of Judah, who's yeah. already defeated him. Amen. Okay, so he pretends to be that lion, okay? Mm -hmm. He's a liar. And then it says, whom he may devour. So it's he's, it's saying he can't devour all of us. Correct. Okay, so put on the full armor of God. So that full armor is not what you might think. Mm -hmm. It's putting on the word. Yes. The word. Every time he comes at you, with a lie, because that's all he can do, rebuke it with the word, yeah. okay? So most of us here have been here for a while, we used to speak the word. So there was a word for wisdom, there's a word for help, there's a word for laying hands on the sick, rebuking demons, there was a word in our finances. So every time he tries to lie to you in your mind, it's, it's all the mind, 
rebuke him with the word. And if you don't have that word, all you can simply say is, I am the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. I've been doing that in my life, the things that my flesh used to hunger and want, <coughs> no more. Because I am the righteousness of God through Jesus, no matter what. So I just wanted to encourage everybody else today that... He pretends to be something he's not. Yeah. He's right. not. He's defeated. So yeah. hopefully that will encourage somebody. Yeah. 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 And I feel like there's a scripture, I don't remember if it's in the Psalms or somewhere, it talks about it, the, that lion mm -hmm. who pretends to be a lion, his teeth have been plucked out. Yeah. He has no teeth. Yeah. But he is the father of lies, and, yes. and his, his tricks and his games can deceive us so, wow. so easily. Yeah. Amen. Anyone else? Any prayer requests or testimonies this morning? Yeah, Tim. Yes. Uh, the other day I, I was at a church I mentioned about. Uh, I had to pull that uh, uh, tractor broke down and I had to drag it across the tracks. Well, um, just before the train come, and, and uh, I could only get it in second gear, so or first gear, which is two miles an hour. So, man, how slow I was going. And and I just remember that when that uh, we crossed the tracks. And you can see in the mirror, here comes a train, four engine train, how close that was. Well, I shared it uh, uh, back with a friend, and, and you know, and that person said, well, it's better to be lucky than good, you know. And I remember when he said luck, I said, no way. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was absolutely not luck right. whatsoever. You know, I don't believe in luck, I believe in God's blessing. Yes. You know, because that was just seconds. I mean, there, and, and so I just, when we thank God for all the blessings he gives in our life, mm -hmm. you know, just things that he's always running ahead. You know, mm -hmm. he said, come follow me. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're following somebody, they're walking in front of you. Mm -hmm. They're already, already there. So that's why I think God really uh, put up my heart for us not to worry right. so much about things. You know, mm -hmm. it says in Matthew, we worry so much. It's mm -hmm. like, it, it's hard to have faith and worry about the the issues at the same time. Right. And we give it to God. God already knows where you're at. Sometimes I think people think, well, uh, you know, God goes to sleep or he's not aware of what's going on down there. It says he never sleeps or never slumbers. So he's always aware. Right. And if we give those situations to God and just learn to trust him, you know, how much more peace we have in our lives. Right. Amen. 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 Yeah, I just read something the other day, Tim. Luck comes from Lucifer, comes from the right. word Lucifer. Yeah. So oh, we think, you know, well, that was a lucky break, but that's bad luck. That's just bogus. There is no such thing as luck for Christians. Right. 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 It's just the, the truth of God and, and yes. faith in whatever He has promised. Yeah, that's, that's, yes. yeah I hear that all the time. It's better to be lucky than it is to be good. That's BS, too. Yeah. <laughs> right. The good one's already given us everything. We don't have to be lucky. That's right. right. That's right. right. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had a mammogram and a CT scan done on Tuesday. Well, like a year ago, um, on the CT scan in my lung, it had shown that I had a nodule. So that's why they wanted to recheck. So anyway, um, I got my results yesterday, and everything came back good. everybody for just befriending my friend. Uh, she really tried to stay composed because of who she is, but the Lord had other plans, and she was really ministered to, so, and especially by the love, because she's just really been trying to find love in so many different places. Um, different churches, I mean, I, I don't mean that in a bad way. <laughs> but anyhow, she just really felt it here, so that's really, you know, uh, when you go to churches and don't feel love, or don't feel connection, it makes it sometimes difficult. Um, I went home and, you know, when I fell, I tore the meniscus in my knee as well. Literally, I mean, my knee, I, everything that we did and everything that I proclaimed, the giants and everything, I know, I knew it was just a trick of the devil. I mean, literally, like I had both babies soon as I got home. I could not move hardly, I could not hold them, I could not get up and down. I was like in a, in a 10 out of 10 in pain. <laughs> But thank God this morning I feel nothing and I just kept reading. Praise the Lord. 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 Praise the
Yeah, yeah. Sheila kicked us off yesterday talking about expectation. Yeah. That's good. It was amazing, yeah. and you know, she talked about um, what was it? What were the three things before you got to the sling? You had the oh, now you ask lion. me. <laughs> Slingshot. Yeah. That was tremendous. Yeah. That was tremendous. Yeah. Don't just kill him. He catch. Yeah. And and you know what? Of all those, the devil's just the lion. He's just the easy one. Yeah. He's the easy one. You just ignore him, rebuke him, move on. I don't know who you think you're talking to. Who are you? What's your name? Oh, that's right. You don't you don't matter to me. Right. That's right. Yeah. Read I wanted to share another one because I came across this scripture today this morning. And it really blessed me. I, I was thinking of, uh, well, I mean, there was so many things that blessed me at the women's ministry. Yes. And hearing the testimony of your life, you know. And, yeah, that was pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. But um, with the guest speaker, how she talked about how God's purpose mm -hmm. came through, like, through five years of mm -hmm. serious trials in her life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is a scripture, and that really blessed me to think about that, you know, and just what she had said in there, too, I could relate. And I just, you know, God knows where we're yeah. at, yeah. Yes. where we've been, yes. and the purpose that he has for us. Yes. Yes. Today, tomorrow. Amen. So this is the scripture that I have. No matter what goes on in our lives, God has that purpose still. Amen. And he's going to bring it about. Yeah. Yes. Amen. So I guess this is my sharing after you said, you know, you got to share downstairs and there was tears and, and I had missed out on that. But I thank God that I have this time that I can share. Amen. You know, my part. Amen. Amen. And the scripture that it is, is you can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. Yes. Yes. Proverbs 19.21. Praise the Lord. So God wrote that on your card. God wrote that on your card. I was wondering if I have one of those. <laughs> Well, God, God, Holy Ghost gave you a card. We're gonna, Sarah and I are gonna order packs of these, yeah. and we're gonna make sure everybody has some of these. They, it was a tremendous. I've never, I've never sat through and witnessed woman after woman after woman. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. What's the Holy Ghost say about that? He answered every woman there, and He answered you this morning. Yes. That was your card. That was your yes. card with that scripture yeah. this morning. Exactly. Yes. yes. Oh. Praise the Lord. Here. Yes. But I spoke it this morning on Facebook, and it's for my children yes. and for my grandchildren. Yes. And all, his purpose will prevail. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God is so good. He is. He's so good. Like, if there's just nothing that He has proven over and over and over, He is good. Yes. Oh, He loves us so much. And I think one of the speakers yesterday defined love. The Bible defines love. That was, that was you, wasn't it? The Bible defines love as his love for us. That's love. Yeah. Not the human love. Not what we, As much as we love each other, that doesn't touch the love that God has for us. It doesn't touch it. But he gives and he gives and he gives. Anybody else? For a great turnout, I don't think we yeah. were really anticipating that many. We had like 16 of us. That was fabulous, right? Great. Yeah. Yeah. It was fantastic. So thankful. Anyone else this morning? Yeah. I want to expand a little bit on what Rita was talking about the medical things. It was, uh, it was yesterday or the day before, you know, I got the mail and I seen it was medical, medical, and I was like, oh boy, another bill, another bill, whatever. So I handed them to her. And I, I even told her this. I said, you know, oh, she's had some medical issues and and I told her she went for the mammogram and the CT scan, and I already knew that everything was okay. And it wasn't me. I told her, I said, it wasn't me. I, I said, I just knew from the Lord that 
I said, I'm not even worried about that stuff. And, you know, the Americans want to know nothing. No, they want nothing. So, praise God. Praise, praise God. Yes. Yeah. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Yeah, Rita. <laughs> and I thank God that He has given me my husband. Yes. yes. To be able to speak those things. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Things for me. Amen. All right. Let's stand and go to the Lord this morning. Oh, that you are good, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the love that you have poured out. And that you continue to pour out over us, Lord. The blessings, Lord, that you flow, Lord. We thank you for the wisdom and the revelation that you continue to give us, Lord. The enemy comes, but he is a liar. And we refuse to give heed to his lies, Lord, because we know the truth. Yes. We know you, Jesus, and we know everything that you have done, the finished work, that we do not have to listen to those lies. We do not have to succumb to those lies. Our bodies can lie. Our bank accounts can lie. People can lie. Relationships can lie. Circumstances in this world can lie. But you only speak truth. And when we will stop and we will listen to that still, small voice, you whisper to us, you are good. Yes. You are whole. Yes. You are healed. Yes. You are provided for. Yes. What do you worry for? Right. Have peace, my child. My child in whom I am well pleased. Lord. My beautiful daughter. Lord. My valiant son. Yes. You are more than enough. I have made you yes. more than enough. I have given you the keys to the kingdom. Yes. I have given you everything yes. to live an abundant life. Trust me. That is our struggle, just to trust you, Lord. Help us to trust you, Lord. To put aside those worries, to put aside those doubts, to put aside our unbelief. And to step out. To step out and just say, I trust you, Lord. Oh, that everything that you bring my way is blessing. Everything that you bring my way is prosperity, is health, and wholeness, and healing, and peace, and love, and joy, and the Holy Ghost. And I'm just going to leave everything else behind. You have given us precious promises, Lord. We will remind you of those promises. We will hold fast to those promises until we see with our eyes. In this day, now, you are a God of right now, not tomorrow, not next year. Now. Now. Right now. The blessing is right now. And right now, Lord, we speak to our ancestors. We speak to those generational blessings. The prayers of our fathers and grandfathers and mothers and grandmothers and great-great-grandparents, Lord. Those prayers that have been sown, let them come forth and bear fruit. Now is the time, Lord, right now, Lord. And right now, Lord, we're drawing a line in the sand for our children, for the generations that follow us. Nothing but blessings, Lord. Lay up treasures for our generations to come after us, Lord, that they would know that you are the source of all that is good and pure and true. That you lay up treasures for our children and our children's children and their children. Jesus, we have been blessed to be a blessing. So let us pour out to one another, Lord, as we have the excess, Lord. We come here today to pour out the excess. Church, we need to pour out the excess because as we do, he pours in. Let all blessings flow, Lord. All blessings flow in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Just a reminder that if you brought a cell phone today to please silence it. And next Sunday, uh, if you guys haven't uh, checked the sign up sheet in the back, please do so. We're gonna have a soup soup supper, more fellowship after the service next Sunday.
All right. Uh, Toby, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also, um, I shared an event on the Abundant Link Facebook page. The Garden Gate Ranch Ministries is actually doing, um, they're doing some filming for a video for their ministry, and they need 50 volunteers to be pedestrians in their video tonight. So they need some extras who are willing to give their time. Um, it's the, the yeah, it's an hour between 4:30 and 5:30 downtown tonight. They need people to just walk from point A to point B. So all you're doing is walking from point A to point B, but they need to do it in multiple takes to make this video. And so anybody that has time tonight, any of the kids that want to be in a video, um, anybody who can participate, um, they need 50 people to just to come walk the sidewalk and, and be extras in their video as they're um, preparing more videos for Garden Gate Ranch Ministries. Yeah, so all you got to do is when you go to the post that Suzanne yep. shared, you click on that page and RSVP that you're going, and they know how many people are going to be there, but they know that they need 50. And really, all you're doing is walking. You're just walking. That's all you're doing is walking. So yeah. it's not scary. And no, no speaking lines. Trying to take anybody, but um, <laughs> it's just for a video. And I believe they said that this was their third try doing it. So it'd be great if we could all like just kind of band together and help them, so they don't have to try to do it again. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, one other thing, uh, I haven't gotten the YouTube video uh, put together of the trailer, but Rita handed me a DVD called uh, Sunday in Manhattan. Uh, she's had it since, what, 2000? 2003. And I've never looked at it. I didn't and, watch it. Uh, <laughs> I didn't watch it because I was waiting for a certain time, and then things happened, and then it just, yeah. So, so she gave me the opportunity to view it, and what it is is the life of Billy Sunday. And the thing that threw a curve at me is that it was in a musical. <laughs> and I thought, what? Yeah. Sunday on Broadway, you know, but it, they did it really good. They did a real awesome job, and, and uh, I cleared with Pastor for viewing, so I'm hoping sometime in December, even if we got to go into January, uh, whatever Friday <coughs> night have come, let's uh, hang out and watch this movie. We can do it downstairs. Uh, we can do it upstairs. It doesn't matter to me. You just want to have time to fellowship and share this. This is it's an awesome film, and it's about uh, 85 minutes long, so okay. it's not like it's all night or nothing like that. So, I will volunteer to bring the popcorn and the hot chocolate. We 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 have we have the capability of if the youth want to have their own thing going on, I can split the screen to go between both TVs, so they can keep their turf and uh, the rest of the adults and stuff can be on the main part. That's no big deal. Okay. I can do that. Well, we used to have New Year's Eve parties. That might be something we could do for New Year's Eve party. Just okay. throwing that out there. I don't know if anybody has plans. But... I think that's on a Monday. New Year's Eve? I think so. Okay. So. There you go. I'll, have, I'll be teaching class. So. Oh, even on New Year's Eve? Okay. New Year's Eve. Oh, okay. okay. We can't do New Year's Eve. Okay. That's our party. Okay, and, then and we'll find another day. Christmas is on a Monday, too. That's why I said. Okay. We'll find <laughs> I'm still bringing the popcorn and the hot chocolate. We'll figure it out. We'll figure out a time. That's why I'm shooting for like uh, the first week of December, maybe third, third, getting too close to Christmas. Yeah. Uh, then I was figuring in the January. So all I right. already thought about what you all just said. So. <laughs> Kind of All right, so it sounds like we're going to need to start an events calendar for yeah. our little church, which I think is fantastic. Yes. Um, so we can post events on the Facebook page, so please um, invite members as people come or as visitors have come. Anybody in the women, anybody that was visiting for the women's ministry, please add them to our church page, and we'll just start an events page because we have lots going on. And uh, I was at this uh, Wednesday night, uh, Winter Jam. Winter Jam, January 26th. Yeah, they did up the price. Yeah, so uh, Michael's going to get a uh, thing put together so we can display it. This will be the first thing put on the new youth bolt board downstairs. Right, ladies? Woohoo! Okay, so this is on. A year ago, uh, Kennedy and Nicole gave their hearts to Jesus at this event. Yay! Uh, the Lord. Born yes. down. They said there over uh, 10,000 youth gave their hearts to Jesus at the jam last year. So, more. And, uh, this will be a youth event this year, um, and any of the adults who still are young at heart, come on and jam down. So, I was there a couple times with my grandkids and some of the youth before, yeah. and do it again. Yeah. So, Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, well. <laughs>
All right. And now, Toby and Ron, if you two gentlemen could please come take an offering. That would be fantastic. spoken in this building through this weekend, Lord, that the Spirit continues to carry mm. through, Lord God, yes. that we can feed off it, Lord, and take it with us and share it with the world. For your word is so worthy, God, that we cannot contain it to ourselves. Right. It needs to be shared, God. Yes. And we live it each and every day. For your word is faithful and true, Lord. Yes. We thank you for it. Now, Lord, just bless this offering. Bless the gift and the giver in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 As the worship team comes forth, uh, I just want to thank them for studying me on. Thank you, you James. Yeah. That's just that's just how that's how I'm gonna be, okay? <laughs> All right, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
So, the first one we've done, one of the ones we've done last night was Let the River Flow. We did it Friday night. I think we did it last Wednesday night. Some songs get caught in the groove. That's not a bad thing sometimes. I mean, I've seen people do it just to, out of repeatability, but this is not what it's about. This is where we're at right now. <clears throat> And everybody says, well, you know, let the river flow, you know, from through the front, and get back in this Ezekiel situation and stuff like that. But the bottom line is, you have the living water in you. Mm -hmm. Let that river flow. Mm -hmm. You have the Holy Ghost in you. Yes. Let that river flow. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said before, I was with Jeffrey uh, Men last night, and we've known this song since 94, 95, when Revival Brownsville was going, all that stuff, and that was neat. Everything else that was then, it was a marker, it's there, it's a marker, it's not going back to but we're going forward so last night she got that river and i saw the door open up and she just she just tore it up she just went after it and these guys are like i said jaws on the floor nice. um, i'm exalting the lord through sarah yeah. as she was exalting the lord so anyway guess what yeah.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Let's praise our King right now. Hallelujah. He is King. King of kings and Lord of lords right now. Hallelujah. He is the King. Praise God. He is seated on the throne. Hallelujah. And we are seated with Him in righteousness. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being a benevolent King. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give him a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Suzanne, for opening. Thank you, all of you for sharing. And uh, thank you, Mike, and the worship team. As always, great job. Praise the Lord. So grateful for the uh, ministry of the uh, women's conference. Praise the Lord. And uh, it just, uh, it's just another, amen, weapon uh, used against the enemy, praise the Lord, and uh, strengthens the body of Christ, praise the Lord, amen. So we're grateful to all of them, praise the Lord, and appreciate what the Lord is doing, praise God. The kids have already gone downstairs, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now you all waiting on me. Praise the Lord. Everybody searches for the meaning of life. Praise the Lord. And I have the answer. Praise the Lord. It's the period between birth and death. God. That's the meaning of life. Hallelujah. But there's a whole nother thing going. Amen. A new life. A born again life. Praise the Lord. And it's a life that never ends. It's in Christ. Praise the Lord. So I want to talk to you about some things this morning. Uh, just as Mike was uh, relating in, uh, in the song and then when he stopped and spoke. And that's the part that I really want to talk to you about is that God is a now God and He's doing something right now. Mm -hmm. And He has been doing something right now all along. The problem with uh, religion and, uh, and that kind of way of looking at things is we always, we're always projecting things to the future. We're always looking out in the future for something that's going to happen. The truth is, the moment Jesus came and established his kingdom, the now began. Amen. We're not under the old covenant. There's no longer any judgment, any uh, uh, death, sin. It's all been dealt with. We are in a new covenant. And in this new covenant, the new covenant is the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, joy, love in the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now operate, we now live by the Spirit of God. Under the Old Covenant, they lived by the law. They lived by doing, by trying to be uh, faithful to keep those rules, which they were never able to do. Jesus kept it all so that now we can live by the Spirit. We've received the Spirit of God. We have Christ in us, the hope of glory, so that we operate now by the Spirit. But as long as we're looking to the future for some future event to take place, we don't really live by the Spirit. We're still living in the flesh. And once in a while, we bump into the Spirit in the process. It's just a metaphor, but I'm saying we, we obviously we have the Spirit, but we don't live by it because we're still actually thinking under in terms of the Old Covenant of rules that we have to keep and, and behaviors and all these kinds of things. We've been freed from all of that so that we can be ourselves in Christ. Amen. This is not a cookie cutter, you know, uh, stamped out uh, factory type, uh, you know, uh, line of, of just repetitious and, and uh, clone-like individuals. We are all unique in who we are in Christ. The thing that, that binds us together is that one spirit that we all share, that we all have. Amen. The DNA of God. 
makes us all brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen. So it's how we operate from that knowledge, from that revelation that determines how much of God is revealed in this earth. Amen. Jesus came with the fullness of the Godhead dwelling in him. We have that same fullness dwelling in us. He didn't give us a portion of the Spirit. He gave Himself fully and completely to us so that He could, so that each of us could be a revelation of God in the earth. Amen. So that's, that's where I want to start with uh, this morning in Isaiah chapter 9, and we'll read verses 6 and 7. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. And I have this up here only because I, was, I mentioned the other day that I, this is... Just a, a book of translations. It's got about a half a dozen different translations, and because the uh, the program for this is not capable of bringing up the amplified, I just have it up here because I want to read something to you out of the amplified at some point here, just because it does amplify it. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes. Makes it a little clearer. Uh, hence the, the amplified. Praise the Lord. So for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of His government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon His kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Praise the Lord. All right, now let's go to John chapter 14 and we'll read verses 10 through 18. John 14 verses 10 through 18. And I have uh, several places here where I'm going to have some fairly lengthy scripture reading, but only so you can see the reality of what it is we're talking about. Because I've got to tell you, some of this stuff that I've been talking about here for the last couple, three weeks or so, are things that are what is called eschatology, uh, which is really just the teaching of end times, that is so perverted and so screwed up and so humanly translated that we have missed a major, major message that God is trying to get to us and has tried to get to us ever since for 2,000 years, basically. So, uh, amen, actually for longer than that, but in our uh, context of the New Covenant for a couple of thousand years. So, believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I'm in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. This could be every one of our testimonies. In fact, it should be every one of our testimonies. Yeah. Amen. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. I will pray the Father, and he'll give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Praise the Lord. So from the moment of Jesus' birth, the kingdom of God would begin to fill the earth. This is not something out here in what we have thought to be the book of Revelation, which is, if you know, I'm not even going there this morning, but at some point I might go back to that. I taught on this here a few years back. Uh, that's just another whole thing. But it's, a, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ is what it is. It isn't the revelation of a bunch of weird things. Right. It's a revelation of Jesus, and we've just misinterpreted 90% of it. But nevertheless, the kingdom of God began to fill the earth with the birth of Christ, mm -hmm. with the coming of Jesus. Amen? Our Messiah King. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So the Jews, with the exception of a, of a small remnant, never recognized, nor did they ever receive Him. Mm -hmm. They didn't accept Him as their Messiah or as their King. Amen? Right. Everywhere that Jesus went, He did one thing consistently. He preached the kingdom of God. Yes. He preached the kingdom as a present reality. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Every time he healed the sick, every time he raised the dead or cast out a devil, amen, he was demonstrating the kingdom. Yes. He just told us we are to do the same thing. That's how we demonstrate the kingdom. That's how the kingdom is spread. That's how the kingdom becomes 
a viable reality in people's lives. That's how it grows. That's how it expands. Praise God. So look at, let's look at this. Matthew chapter 12, verses, uh, or just Matthew 12, verse 28. Matthew 12 and verse 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Okay? All right. Matthew 9, uh, verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. So not only did Jesus do these works, he commissioned us to do the same thing, did he not? Greater works than these will you do, right? We'll look at Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 and 8. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Mm -hmm. That's us. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Now, he always made statements like, uh, well, the kingdom of God is like, you know, it's like a mustard seed. It's like a farmer sowing, you know, in a field and so on and so forth. He always said the kingdom of God is like. He didn't say the kingdom of God is going to be like. He said it is like, praise the Lord. So the time of the king and his kingdom with power was underway. Yep. It was ongoing, amen. And we are citizens in the kingdom of God yes. right now amen. by virtue of the new birth. That's how we got into the new kingdom. That's how we become citizens yes. of the kingdom of God, amen. Jesus taught us to pray when he was telling his disciples. He said, when you pray, pray like this. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right. Praise the Lord. Get it down here. Amen. And so generally, what religion has done is has taught us that God's primary purpose was to get us from here to there. Mm -hmm. Now there is there. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But the gospel of the kingdom teaches us that God wants to do what he really is after is to get what's happening there to happen here. Yes. It's less about us going there as it is about getting that here. We're going to go there. It's a, there is a there, you know. I'm just saying, but the primary purpose of the kingdom of God, of Jesus coming, was to get what's there down here. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's what Jesus was doing all the time when he was representing the kingdom. Amen. So, the earth does not belong to the devil. It doesn't belong to his minions. It doesn't belong to the demons. It belongs to us. You know, we were set free from the law. So that we could be married to Christ. Isn't that what it says? You're, you know, unless the husband dies, you're not free to marry again. But if that husband has died and the law is dead, it's, it's over, it's finished. We've been freed from that so that we could be married to Christ. Yes. Amen. And so what I'm saying is that the, the, this earth doesn't belong to the devil anymore. It doesn't belong to religion. It belongs to Mr. and Mrs. Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. That's us. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. Yes. I'll give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth is going to be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Yes. That's the kingdom come. Yes. That's what we're supposed to be about. Amen. Right. So why did the Jews miss this? Why did they miss the king and his kingdom? Because they didn't know what they were looking for. Amen. They were looking for a literal kingdom with armies, <coughs> with, you know, warriors and battles and, and like David had. Yeah. Amen. They didn't know that this kingdom was from above. They didn't know the nature of this kingdom. They didn't understand that it was a spiritual kingdom, not a literal, amen, physical kingdom. Praise the Lord. What is the scripture? Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Paul said, in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. It's the spirit, it's the power of the spirit that makes this thing work. You don't cast out demons by, the, by your own strength. You do it by the Spirit of God. You don't heal the sick by your ability. You do it by the Spirit of God. That's the kingdom, amen, that we're talking about. So people today are missing the kingdom in its present reality, amen, just like the Jews did. They don't know what they're looking for. 
If they think they understand what they're looking for, then they're projecting it into the future someplace that it's going to happen somewhere out there. We just sang a song here talking about he's going to come in power. He's come in power, church. He's already come in power. Yes. Now, I'm not, I'm not rebuking that. I'm just saying we, we misinterpret things simply because of, the, of somebody else's misinterpretation. Yes, yes. He's given us the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us into all truth. Amen. That's revelation. That's not just more information. Praise the Lord. So Christianity, for a large part, has let songbook theology dominate our thinking. Now, I'm not talking about what we sing so much here because that's not necessarily the case. We are a little more beyond that. But I'm talking about the old hymns, and a lot of them are beautiful and true. Yeah. But a lot of them are bad theology. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. And we've let that kind of thing dictate to us and determine for us, amen, what God is really doing. And it dominates our thinking. And we end up living like strangers in the promised land. Yes. Wandering, still wandering around, wondering, you know, when are we going to get there? How are we going to, uh, you know, how, when will we achieve this, this reality? Amen. Amen. Because we won't take now for an answer. Yes. Now. Because the moment we take now for an answer, it means we've got to start living by faith and stop living by sight. Right. Every testimony I heard from Sarah and everyone else, what, what, how did that happen? What, what uh, Rita was saying, amen, what, what Eric was saying, what everybody was talking about, what, what uh, Tim was talking about. What? What was that? It was faith. Yes. It wasn't believing what we saw. It was believing what we felt in our heart. It was believing something that was not tangible. It was believing something that we knew a good God would do, but we don't have evidence, physical evidence for it. That's living by faith. Yes. And that's what causes us to say things yes. that don't line up with what we're seeing. Right. Because what we say will make the things that we see line up with our words. Yes. That's what God did. There was, it, it was dark, right? Yes. And he said, light. Yes. And light was. Yes. That's the way our Father operates. That's right. Therefore, that's how we are to operate. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, we need to wake up to our citizenship, our inheritance, and then... Because until we do that, we'll never become dispensers of the kingdom. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be spreading the kingdom. We're supposed to be dispensing the kingdom. So what made the Jews in, in Jesus' day, what made them think that this physical kingdom or this kingdom that they misinterpreted, but nevertheless, this kingdom was coming? What, what, what caused them to believe that the kingdom could appear immediately? All right. Remember, they didn't have the New Testament, but they did know the scriptures from the Old Covenant, from the Old Testament. They had the Isaiah, they had Daniel, they had all the promises of the prophets, amen, throughout the Old Testament. So, Daniel 2, and I mentioned this before, is a perfect example. It's, a, it's something we could look at and see why they believed that the kingdom was coming and it, and it would happen right now. Now, their, I, their, their conception of that kingdom was flawed, but they knew the kingdom was coming. Mm -hmm. And they knew it because of the prophetic words of the Old Testament, mm -hmm. of what we call the Old Testament. Amen. In Daniel 2, and rather than take the time to read the whole thing, I'll just give you a little synopsis here. Most of you know the stories anyway. But So, King Nebuchadnezzar has this dream, and his spirit is troubled. And so he calls for all of his magicians, all of his astrologers, his sorcerers, his soothsayers, amen, and, and all of these seers to come and interpret the dream. But none of them could do it. None of them could do it because the king couldn't even remember what the dream was. It's kind of hard to interpret something you don't know. You know, I mean, he just knew it bothered him, praise the Lord. And so the king threatens to kill all of these guys if they couldn't tell him the dream. And then the interpretation of the dream. Now, just so happens that Daniel and his friends are included in those people that are going to get killed if somebody doesn't come up with an interpretation, with the dream and the interpretation of it. Praise the Lord. And so this is the context in which Daniel says to the king, give me some time and I'll show you the interpretation. I'll give you the, I'll give you the interpretation. Amen. So look at Daniel chapter 2 and verse 28.
So there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and thy visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. And so then Daniel not only gives him the interpretation, but he also gives him the dream itself, which he says is about, it's going to be in the what? Latter days, in the end days, in the last days, right? All right, Daniel 2, verses 31 through 35. Now remember, notice he's revealing to the king what's going to happen in the last days, in the latter days. Amen. Thou, O king, sawest to behold a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image, his head was of, of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. Now notice, again, he's revealing to the king what's going to happen in these last days. And he tells him, ultimately, there's going to be a stone that's cut out without hands, and that stone is Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the stone that the builders rejected. Amen. But we are God's children. You could say we're chips off the old block. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, I had to say that, but, uh, you know, it's good. Praise the Lord. He's the block. Amen. Hallelujah. And that stone now was destined to become a great mountain and fill the entire earth. Right? So, one of the things that we need to take away from the book of Daniel is that the whole earth is going to be filled with this great mountain called the kingdom of God. Yes. Amen. Daniel then starts to unfold to the king the future of his kingdom and these kingdoms that would follow until, time, until the time when God would set up his kingdom that would never be destroyed. Right. Now, I'm going to read from the Amplified and this is uh, Daniel chapter 2, verse 36 through 45. Just because it, it, it's a clear, uh, clear uh, representation of the word. This was the dream. And we, tell, we will tell the interpretation of it to the king. You, O king, are the king of the earthly kings to whom the God of heaven has given the kingdom, the power, the might, and the glory. It's also in Jeremiah 25, 27, and a couple of other places. But, and wherever the children of men dwell, and the beasts of the field, and the birds of the heavens, he has given them unto your hand, and has made you to rule over them all. You, king of Babylon, are the head of gold. And after you shall arise another kingdom, the Medo-Persian, inferior to you. And still a third kingdom of bronze, Greece, under Alexander the Great which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom, Rome, shall be strong as iron, since iron breaks to pieces and subdues all things, and like iron, which crushes, it shall break and crush all these. And as you saw the feet and the toes, by the way, that, that is also carried out in, in, in Daniel chapter 7, but as you saw the feet and toes partly of baked clay of the potter and partly of iron, it shall be a divided kingdom. But there shall be in it some of the firmness and strength of iron, just as you saw the iron mixed with miry earth and clay. And as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of baked clay of the potter, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly brittle and broken. And as you saw the iron mixed with miry and earth and clay, so they shall mingle themselves in the seed of men in marriage bonds. But they will not hold together, for two such elements or ideologies can never harmonize, even as iron does not mingle itself with clay. And in the days of these final ten kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, nor shall its sovereignty be left to another people. But it shall break and crush and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever." 
just as you saw. That's also in Daniel 7. It's also in the book of Revelation chapter 11 and Luke uh, 1 some other places. But just as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountains without hands and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. The dream is certain. The interpretation of it is sure. So, God made known to the king what will take place in the latter days leading up to the God of heaven setting up his kingdom mm -hmm. that will never be destroyed or its sovereignty left to others. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Look at Daniel 2.44 uh, now, Sheila. Daniel 2.44. Here he says, I can read it from the, uh, from the Amplified, but if I can get enough light on it, because this is really little. <laughs> So, um, and in the days of these final ten kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, nor shall its sovereignty be left to another people, but it shall break and crush and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, now the first kingdom, he, we just read, first kingdom was Babylon mm -hmm. under Nebuchadnezzar. The second was the Medo-Persian Empire under Cyrus, under Darius, and Artaxerxes. That's, that's, that's all in Ezra. You can find it in Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. The third kingdom is Greece under Alexander the Great. The fourth kingdom is Rome. Yep. That same verse declares that in the days of these final ten kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. Praise the Lord. So it was in fact during the days of the Roman occupation of Israel and, and, and the greater part of the known world at the time. And Je that Jesus, who was the rock cut out of the mountain without hands, appears to establish his everlasting kingdom. Praise the Lord. It, 2,000 years ago, amen, is when this was happening. Not somewhere out in 2028 20, or something. And it's, it's there. I mean, it's just there in black and white. It's not difficult. Praise the Lord. His kingdom has been on the increase from that day, from that time, amen. And it continues to trump every other kingdom that has ever been or that will ever come. We already know it is. That's the reality of it. Praise God. That's why the Jews were expecting the kingdom to immediately appear because they had all this scripture telling them it was going to happen. Praise the Lord. Daniel, Isaiah. All those prophets, they were prophesying this kingdom was going to come. That's what they were looking for. Look at Psalms 24, verse 1. These are all, by the way, these, these scriptures I'm reading here, I'm going to read to you from Psalms. They're messianic scriptures. They're prophetic scriptures speaking of the Messiah, the coming of the Messiah. Though they were written thousands of years earlier. So, the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. When the Messiah comes, the earth is the Lord's again. It hasn't been the Lord's because the enemy came in and usurped the authority that, that God gave man. Amen. So, God's going to have to come back as a man and get that authority back. Once he does that, the earth is now the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. Yes. Praise the Lord. All right, Psalms 24. Uh, Psalms 2, verses 1 and 2, or 1 through 12. Psalms, uh, have I confused you completely? Psalms 2, verse 1 through 12. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves up and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. He's just, what a bunch of idiots. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me. Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me and I'll give you the heathen for your inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust yes. in him. Amen. So I, I said these are all, these are messianic prophecies in the Psalms that are fulfilled in the first century. Amen. When Rome was in power. Right. Praise the Lord. The God of heaven did set up the kingdom. 
A kingdom that would never be destroyed or left to other people. Praise the Lord. It ought to, this ought to get us, I, mean, I don't know about you, but it ought to get us excited. It ought to get us emboldened and empowered to do what we can do, what God has declared we can do, amen, 2,000 years ago. That's right. But this kingdom would be an ever-increasing kingdom, a kingdom without end. From the moment Jesus brought it into this earth in his birth, it is a kingdom that will never end, a kingdom that is ever-increasing. Amen. That would continue to fill the whole earth till it filled the whole earth with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord like the water covers the sea. Yes. This promise to break in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold that was prophesied by Daniel was fulfilled 2,000 years ago. Yes. That's not a future event, church. It's already done. Yes. Praise the Lord. When Jesus was raised from the dead and ascended to the right hand of God the Father, it was destroyed. The kingdoms of this world were no more. They're still physical. They're still here. But His kingdom dominates all of them and rules yes. forever. Yes. World without end. Praise the Lord. Yes. So he ascended what? Far above all principalities, all powers, all might and dominion, every name that's named. Yep. Amen. In the earth, beneath the earth and above the earth. Amen. Yes. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee would bow and every tongue would confess he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. All right, Jan John chapter 12, verses 13 through 16. See, we begin to realize and recognize who we are and what we're a part of. Mm -hmm. Nothing can stop us. Mm -hmm. The kingdom will just begin to expand. How does it expand? We start laying hands on the sick. We start casting out devils. We start saying things to things that are not as though they were. Instead of waiting for some another, for a new revival, for something to happen, you know, somewhere else or someplace or some time, and then it's going to all take place. No, I'm, I'm tired of hearing that. I'm not mad at anybody. I'm just tired. I'm just tired of the same old rhetoric that that means nothing. Right. Either we're going to take authority and, and take responsibility for who we are now. Yes. Or we'll just be another generation to pass through and go on to, to be with the Lord. But never get to experience what it is we were put here for in the first place. Yes. If, the, if this thing has gone on and drug on as long as it has, amen, it's only because we've not taken our responsibility. We haven't taken the revelation that God has given us and, and acted on it. It's easier to say, well, you know, maybe someday if I live to be 180... I'll get involved in some of this. I'll, I'll get to be part of it. No, I, 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 right now. Yes. Jesus is on his way up to Jerusalem. And they took branches of palm trees. And this, by the way, this is at the same time when they're bringing that lamb up to be offered, the, the atonement, the lamb of atonement for the people of Israel. They're coming on converging paths. Actually, if you go back and look at the... Uh, uh, oh, there's, there's several different Eidersham and, and different uh, Jewish scholars who say they, were, they would converge. They would meet before they would get to the temple. So here we have the Lamb of God, who's also the King of Kings, coming up one path, and then their physical thing that they're doing over here coming up another path. And, and when they saw Jesus, now when they saw that other, that little lamb, that spotless lamb, that was just a type, nobody was doing anything. But when they saw Jesus, they took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that comes in the name of the Lord. Now you can imagine how ticked off that would have made the high priest and those who were under, amen, uh, Roman authority, right. under the Caesar, under that king. Because they knew this guy's going to mess our gig up. Yep. He's going to screw us up so that we don't have control and we can't manipulate the system anymore. Right. But that's what the people saw. They were speaking prophetically. They, even though they may not have understood it, they, were, they, they knew this. If this guy's really that, then all of these prophecies are being fulfilled and Rome's about to, about to be over with. It's about to be done. Yes. Now, they thought that was a physical thing, but... But that was because they didn't have the Spirit of God. They could only operate through the natural th way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Amen. So the Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, set thereon as it is written. It's, it's, it's prophesied. Yes. You'll see your king coming on the foal of an ass. Yeah. 
Amen. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. These things understood not his disciples at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him. They were prophesied of him. Amen. That these things were written of him and that they had done these things unto him. Praise the Lord. All right. Romans 1 verses 3 and 4. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. His resurrection proved that's who he was and that that kingdom of Rome was done. The prophecy that Daniel had had was come to pass. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. All right. Let's let's read this. Daniel chapter seven. I'm going to read verses 1 through 14. Daniel 7, verse 1 through 14. That's all right. That's all right. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Now, this is Daniel's dream. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. Four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. This is what happens when we get into Revelation. I'll talk about this in a little bit. I'm not going into all of it now. But this is what happens when we get into Revelation. We start seeing things like this, and all of a sudden we start trying to naturalize them. And that's not what, the, that's not what God is talking about. Amen. You see comp, you know, similar language in, in the book of Revelation. But it's, it's symbolism. It's metaphorical. Now why is it that when we see it anywhere else, we recognize it immediately as a metaphor or as something symbolic or a type, when then we get to the book of Revelation, we try to make it all a reality. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. Talking about these kingdoms. What are this? If you read... The, the Bible, waters, waters represent people. Seas represent masses of humanity. So these kingdoms come up out of these peoples, out of these cultures, out of these people groups. Amen. And so the four great beasts come up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion, had an eagle's wings, and, behold, and, and I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. And it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man. And a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear. And it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said, Thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. And the beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had a great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns, plucked by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes, like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, kingdoms down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. All that stuff there... It was torn down. And now he sees the Ancient of Days sitting on the throne. God, right? And the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow. Who's that telling you? And the hair of his head like the pure wool. Again, this is, this is Revelation kind of language. But it's talking about Jesus, his resurrected reality. Amen? His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. I, a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands of thousands ministered unto him. And ten thousands times ten thousands stood before him. And the judgment was set. And the books were opened. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. 
As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. That's Jesus, by the way, coming back to the throne of God. And there was given him dominion and glory and kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. His kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much clearer, amen, this can be. During the days of the Roman Empire, the God of heaven set up his kingdom. Daniel 7 tells us that during the days of the same Roman kings, one like the Son of Man came to the Ancient of Days and received his coronation as Messiah and King. Mm -hmm. That's what we just read. Amen? During that time, he receives the dominion, the glory, and the kingdom that would never be destroyed. He's not going to be king. He is king. He's king right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords reigning right now. And his kingdom continues to expand. Yes. Praise God. Now, look at Daniel 7, uh, 15 through 28. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. See, the scripture will interpret itself if we just let it, instead of trying to interpret it intellectually. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Look at this. Okay. No, I lost you. Yes, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. When did we? When did the saints come? When they were born again, we become saints of the Most High. Amen. Then he said, "I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, and his nails of brass, which devoured and break into pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the others which came up, and before whom three fell, even that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows." This is what we just read in the previous scriptures in the same chapter. Now I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints. And prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And Jesus said, I'm going away, but don't worry. What the first thing we read here in John, I'm coming back. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm coming in the power of the Spirit. Amen. That's what we're seeing. The Most High came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kings of Israel, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of his kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. This is the same thing he was talking about in Daniel 2. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and a times and the dividing of times. That's the seven years. We're talking about tribulation. I'm not even dealing with that. But, but the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cognitions were much troubled and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. Now, the one thing I want to point out here in Daniel 7 is that he's not reigning alone. He has included the saints of the Most High and has given them dominion and authority to see the kingdom increase. We've been taught the authority of the believer. Have we not? 
but we haven't figured out the authority is more than manipulating life. It's healing the sick. It's raising the dead. It's casting out demons. And continue to destroy the works of the devil. The meaning of life? It's more than just the period between life, birth, and death. The meaning of life is the kingdom of God yes. being exported. The meaning of life is the kingdom of God becoming a reality, not only in our lives, but it has to be in our lives before it can be in anybody yes. else's. Yes. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. This authority has to be used to expand the kingdom of God. So we preach the great big God with all authority in heaven and earth, but we preach it to be a future reality. And then it becomes subjective. Man-made, by the way. We come up with all kinds of theories, human theories, to try to fit our projected idea of this great and all-powerful God that's going to show up sometime out there. And that's why we have all this confusing, confusing doctrine interpretations yep. of Scripture that is actually quite simple if we would just look at it in the context of how he has described it. It is here, it is now, and it is for us yes. to expand yes. and export. Yes. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That, otherwise, if it becomes subjective and it's left up to us to make the interpretation, that's the thing that's keeping us from experiencing it. Yes. We don't experience victory if we think that victory is going to come someday, but till then we just got to suffer. Because we're expecting something to come to establish the kingdom of power and authority. But that's what the Jews were looking for and missed it. We have to lose our last day mentality and get a new day right now mentality. Yes. If our God is a God of the now, then we are people of the now, not of the future. Yes. Amen. Not of what's going to happen. We heard it all testified that you're not who you were. Right. Amen. People could determine, you know, your wage, but they can't determine your value. Right. They can't determine your worth. Right. God has determined that and it cannot be changed. Right. So, you know, the word repent means to change your mind. All of that repentance is about the kingdom is at hand. Repent. Isn't that what he said? Repent. And so we made it, the religion just made this all about uh, turning from. But not we're supposed to be, not what we're turning to. Right. We're turning from that old kingdom, those kingdoms of this world that have been destroyed, to a kingdom that is without end. We're turning to a king and his kingdom that will go on for eternity. Yes. Yes. A kingdom of power, a kingdom of authority, a kingdom of God in us, a kingdom of God and man integrated, a kingdom of God and man being one yes. in this earth. What's there comes here. Yes. The message of Jesus is that the kingdom of heaven is within your grasp, within your reach. Literally within you. Mm -hmm. Praise God. The new covenant is a government of the living spirit in our hearts. Yes. It's about living out of that relationship with our Father and His authority, mm -hmm. which is our inheritance. Yes. So let's enjoy abundant life now. Yes. The kingdom of God, I'm, I'm done. The kingdom of God is one paradigm shift away. Just change your thinking. Repent and turn to the reality and the truth of God now. And it will begin to be exposed and revealed and spread all through the earth till it covers the earth like the waters cover the sea. That's what God has given us. That's what we're about. If we'd make that the focus, instead of projecting everything out here somewhere, and make it now, make it a now focus, we'd start living differently. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean religiously, I mean we would start expecting mm -hmm. 
abundance. We'd start expecting God to bless us. We'd start expecting to be healed and to be whole. And by that, we can then export that healing that I received to somebody else. I can export that financial increase to somebody else who hasn't got to the kingdom yet, who doesn't end. They, the kingdom's got to come to them. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Deliverance. All of these things. They're ours to give. Did he said, whom you forgive, I'll forgive. Do you realize how awesomely powerful that is? Who we forgive. Yep. He forgives. Yes. I mean, if there was nothing else but that, that would be so significant, so life-changing, so yes. earth-shattering. Yes. But he says it so that we could understand, if I give you that kind of power, why do you think I would withhold anything else from you? If I have that kind of confidence in you, that I give you the authority to, to forgive and then bind me to that forgiveness, then there's nothing that you could ask me that I would not give. Amen. Now, not in a little while, not in a few years when we finally get our act together. No, now our act was got together 2,000 years ago. Yes. When that stone cut out without hands yes. came rolling in, amen, and crushed every kingdom of this world. We say, well, there's still kingdoms out there. Listen, they don't mean a thing. They are already under the dominion of God Almighty, regardless of their boasts, regardless of their threats, and regardless of anything else. God is in charge. Yes, he is. And he's gave us the ticket to enforce all of that right here in the earth. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Praise the Lord. Go in the power of His might. That's who you are. That's your identity. Amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.